This is what a lot of people think when they think about Canon. However, if you're not as virtuoso as some folk, you'll probably think of Canon as something that was used in castles in medieval times or in ships to blast the opponents. Or if you think in modern times, you probably think of Canon as a manufacturer of cameras, like the EOS, one of which I would really love to have but I can't afford, the bubble jet printers that they make, and other photographic equipment. And any other electronic stuff that actually they do make. Also, if, if you are a wee bit of a culinary master, you may think of Canon's range of cookers. I don't know if it's the same Canon, but um, when I lived with my parents, we had a Canon Cambridge cooker. When I lived in Hull, we had a Canon Stratford cooker, which was amazing. Yes, I know cookers can't be amazing, but trust me on this one, Canon ones are pretty good. However, <coughs> the Canon who make the bubble jet printers and goodness knows what else, back in the day, they used to make laptop computers, some of which had inbuilt printers. Now this isn't one with an inbuilt printer, but I did find this one while looking for one that had an inbuilt printer. This is a Canon, let me just get the lid up, a Nova Book 200 LS. Oh, and while this thing is uh, going off bloody on us, I'd just like to kind of say that glasses don't help my vision impairment. I... You know, if I could correct my vision, I would. Who wants to spend a life not being able to see properly? But yeah, I can't. So, you know what? I guess you've just got to live with it. Because I have to. And you're not even affected directly by my vision. Okay. So let's have a look at this machine. On the left hand side, there are, appear what, there are what appears to be PC card slots. And instead of having covers that come out, protector covers that you lose, or f flaps that always seem to break off, this one has a wee sliding door, which is kind of unique. I've never seen that before in a laptop. Um, there is also a lock. I think it's to keep all the compartments underneath closed because um, with it unlocked I was able to access the memory compartment, with it locked I wasn't. On the front we see basically the catch to open the lid. On the right hand side we see a button which I'm not sure what it does. Um, a floppy disk drive and we see a power button. On the back, we see a power jack, PS2 mouse keyboard port, RS232 serial port, VGA out, which is always good, um, headphone and microphone sockets, which uh, basically um, would suggest this machine has got sound capabilities, which is nice. A printer, LPT printer part, and a docking station part. 
So let's have a wee look at the inside of this machine. Okay, <coughs> now this is the first laptop that I've had that has got an LCD display. Um, which has a battery meter. I'm guessing the battery would hold no charge right now. Um, but uh, the screen is um, kind of of the clamshell style shape. I kind of like that in this machine. It's they've, they've designed it in such a way that you know it kind of looks modern. Because I mean, I've had screens where the hinge is basic. You know, the screen has just been straight, and then the hinge is just jutted underneath it. Yeah, it looks awful, and to be honest, wouldn't it look that stable? Whereas this, you know, it really looks quite nice. It kind of looks a wee bit beyond its time. You know, it kind of does have that um, feel of a machine that's newer than what it looks. Um, and, as well, from what I can see here, it's been taken very good care of. Now, I got this machine along with the tablet that I was showing in my last video. Um, judging by the Intel badge, I would say that um, it's a 486. Now, the reason I would say that is because I've seen, when I saw this machine on eBay, it was running Windows 3.1, looked to have, um, you know, at least 256 colour screen, probably higher, I don't know. But um, I like the idea of it having sound capability. I don't know if it's got sound uh, inbuilt speakers or whether you have to bring your own. But I think it has got inbuilt ones. Okay. I think it's time we got it off of this spinny table and uh, booted it up. Let's see what she can do. I've just uh, basically plugged it in. And a wee picture of a plug has appeared on the LCD display. Um, however, nothing seems to be coming up on the battery display. Either the battery is missing, or I would say more likely dead. So, let's power it on. For 100 people, I finally have my own DX4100 uh, with a dead clock. Never mind, as my very own DX4100 laptop. No boot device available. Setup has attempted to correct the following errors. Standard CMOS checksum was invalid. Um, defaults loaded. Fixed disk initialization review settings. Um, must be one of these where I have to set the CMOS all the time. Um, let's have a look. Um, so it's... It's one of these. Just check the date. Looks to have 8 megs of RAM, an LCD display, quick boot, CPU speed high. I wonder, you know, what speed I can make it go at. Um, it'll probably pair down to 33 megahertz if I'm honest. <coughs> Just 
to its uh, natural clock speed. Warning, changes to this field after you... Ugh. Drive entry table unused, serial part. Um, value. Save values, exit setup and reboot. I'm sure this had a hard disk when I got it. Yes, here we go. Oh my goodness, look at this. It's got a multi boot configuration. Ooh, I like this. Microsoft Power Management actually works, which is kind of nice. The mouse is not responding. That's not good. Canon Computer Systems. And here we go. It's uh, Windows for Work Groups. And, um, yeah. It kind of looks fantastic. And the audio is working and everything. However, <clears throat> there is one thing that does bother me, which I am going to have to sort out. And that is that sound driver. Not sound driver, the um, track point. So. Let me, yeah. Uh, Says that the trap point's enabled, so I don't I don't really know what's going on there. Hopefully I'll be able to just uh, use a PS2 mouse and be done with it. I do get the feeling though that this is possibly a passive matrix disc uh, display. No, there's no mouse. So let's have a look, then shall we get some of the stuff on here. Program Manager likes to minimise on use on here. So we've got the usual stuff. City Streets, I wonder what that is. It looks like a map. That's quite good. Super confined myself. Street name. 
Okay, let's find... In fact, forget that. I know what we're going to do. We're going to find 4th Street in Edinburgh. Naturally enough, city name not found. It's Edinburgh. It's the capital of Scotland. How can you not know Edinburgh? Why is this even on here? I'm doing with a program that doesn't work on my laptop. What's the point of it? Okay, enough of that. Have a look at the games. Ah, this that's not good. Slim pickings for the old. Um, I wonder what version of Windows this is. It's Windows 3.11, so it's not even Windows for work groups. Hang on, I'm going to try and sort out the brightness here. So I'll be back. Um, the FN key seems to have bought it. The trackpad seems to have kicked the bucket. So here I have the world's most hideous serial mouse. Because I'm guessing that the PS2 key, but the PS2 part is literally <coughs> just for a keyboard. Um, and I reckon that because, you know, when I plugged it in, plugged in a PS2 mouse, booted up Windows, I got a really hideous beep. Which may also explain why I couldn't get the P a PS2 mouse to work on a on the uh, Toshiba 2130CS. Here's a program anyway called Sidekick. Comes with um, quite a nice wee calendar, which saves the wrong date. And I can run certain things. So basically a wee bit like an alternative window shell. In fact, it kind of has... We can just kill Norton uh, Paintbrush for a second. kind of has that feel of uh, Norton Desktop about it. <coughs> now I do wonder if... I mean, I... I mean, I'm, I'm going to probably have a wee bit of a better play about with this, but there's something really that I would quite like to show you. Come with me, follow me here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, worked in Windows before, miss. <laughs> oh no. Oh jeez, oh. It's not good. Okay, do you know what, what we're going to do is we're going to forget that ever happened. Okay, I'd like to show you something else. It's actually in DOS, right. It's basically just the sort of thing I've been looking for. Oh, and while I'm on my... Well, I've been on my travels. Oh, not you as well. <laughs> so that's what I want to show you. I can only show show you it while the mouse is disconnected. I mean, how good is that? You know. So. Um, Basically, this is a wee presentation about this machine. Congratulations on the part. Oh my goodness. Do you know what? Let's. Congratulations on your new purchase of an Innova. Innova. 
notebook, notebook computer, Canon. Quality computer hardware and software. Total service and support. Canon provides you with a complete notebook computer system. The following screen design displays highlight some of the design, the benefits of your Innova book notebook computer. Now press the enter key to continue. Software pre-installed. <coughs> this comes with MS-DOS 6.22, Microsoft Windows 3.11, Sidekick for Windows, CompuServe Information Manager, Official Airline Guide, City Streets for Windows, Phoenix, PCM Plus, PCMCIA drivers, Audio Application Software, Canon Printer Drivers and Original Disk Creator Utility. Original Disk Creator uh, Creation Overview. As listed on the prior display, your Innova Book Notebook Computer comes with a complete with a suite of pre-installed software. The original disk creator utility and master disk images are also pre-installed. This utility allows you to selectively create the disks for any pre-installed applications. The next screen provides information on the number of disks required by each app. We strongly suggest that you use this utility now to make yourself a copy of the original master diskettes. <clears throat> Microsoft MS-DOS 6.22 That will require three disks, six for Microsoft Windows 3.11, four for the display drivers, one for the trackball driver, one for the PCMCIA drivers, ESS Audio Application Software, that's two disks, City Streets for Windows 3.4, which we've already determined is broken, that's two disks. Sidekick for Windows is one disk. CompuServe Information Manager is two disks. And the recovery disk itself is one disk. Total, 23. But I don't need some of those. I have a MS-DOS 6.22. And it's kind of good that this has came with the original image. If you'd like to create your original master disks now, please type yes. Otherwise, please type no to continue with the presentation. The slideshow presentation can be viewed again by simply typing congrats at the DOS command prompt. The original master disks can be created anytime by double clicking on the original disk creation icon from Windows. Do you want to create your original master disks now? No. CompuServe also came with Packard Bells, Gateway 2000s, NEC machines, are just compacts, probably Dells, Hewlett Packard, or any other kind of machine you care to name, it probably came with CompuServe. I know for definite that it came with Packard Bells, I know for definite that it came with Windows 95, I know for definite that it came with NEC ready machines. Um, <coughs> CompuServe. We would like to introduce you to CompuServe. The world's most prestigious personal computer network. They don't seem to, um, they, they kind of neglect to mention here that CompuServe is now no longer. And then we've got a slide on technical support, service and warranty, pretty sure that's out. And a wee thank you from all of us at Canon. Do you know what? You're all very welcome. Thank you for my first 480 x 4 100 computer. I've been after one of these chips and now I can see, really, you know, are you best off with a Pentium 75 or a DX4100? Because that is a question that's been on my mind because I know some 486 skeptics basically say that slower speed Intel, slower, slower speed Intel processors are actually faster than the faster speed 486s. Let me tell you a wee bit of something about the 486DX4. The 486DX2 has got a clock speed doubler on it. Now, it would be natural, therefore, to assume that a DX4 is quadrupled. Actually, that's not the case. 
Intel could not get the rights to use the name DX3, so they had to use DX4. So, basically, that is quite confusing. But the DX4 is actually clock tripled, not qu clock quadrupled. So, the core speed of this system is 33 megahertz. Obviously, CPU cycles, clock doubled, 100 megahertz. Well, 99.9999999999. Well, when I say it's 33 megahertz, I'm to try and get it to 100, the, you know, it'll probably be 33.33333333 recording. It's one of those funny, funny things. Anyway, <coughs> let's go back into Windows and see what else we've got. Yes, and that's what comes up when you start Windows. It's not the Windows logo itself. Ah, good old Windows. You plug the mouse in and it's reacted quite nicely. Okay. So there's um, PCM1, must be for the PC card slot, PC MCS not loaded, nice. System editor, this is uh, for editing system files. This machine has got 8 megs of RAM by the way, yeah I did say. And it's registered to Canon and Nova user, an unknown organization. And then you have a volume control, which is kind of nice. I know that there's keys for the brightness on the keyboard, but because the FN key is out, you know. I would like to kind of see a brightness control, you know, on here. But unfortunately, this, this, you know, that's not going to happen. But I mean, you can have large mouse pointers, 32K, you can go right up to 16.7 million colours. Um, but that's only at 640 by 480. At 60 million colours, you can go right the way up to 1280 by 1024. Um, somehow, though, I don't think that this play, this display can. So let's let's have a wee look. I'm really sorry about the darkness of this. You know, I. I would like to brighten this up a wee bit. <clears throat> so let's have a look at the flight stuff. Yeah, I kind of got the feeling that it had been deleted. So basically, this is a machine, like most laptops of the day, was created for business. And it was created for people on the road, executives. Then you've got chimes, mixers, volume control. <laughs> Reminder, stopwatch, setup. Audio clip library. Do you know? First off, I'm going to see if there's an inbuilt microphone, because I have reason to believe there is. Testing, testing. One, two, three, testing, testing. So I'll go out for a drink. Testing, testing. One, two, three, testing, testing. So I'll go out for a drink. Then there's a microphone. See, which makes it all the more, you know, I mean, it's like Canon. They're quite obviously created here. A very expensive system. Which kind of makes it all the more... You know, it kind of makes you wonder all the more reason why they put a passive matrix display in it. I don't know. To me, it's kind of like... It's, it's kind of like having the recipe for a fantastic curry. And then making it 
with cat food. And I know I've slightly borrowed that phrase from Top Gear, but to be honest, I really don't care. So let's have a look at desktop tools. So we've got antivirus, undelete, smart drive, thank you me jig. So I don't see any disk creation things. Oh! Oh, well, this works now with the mouse. Yeah, I'm starting to kind of see where this mouse driver is at fault. Which makes me kind of believe that I really wouldn't mind reinstalling Windows. Do you know what I think I am going to create all the disks needed? You know, and I am <laughs> I am going to do a Windows reinstall on this. I hope I don't lose the desktop background because let me just show you it. And how nice is that? So, that's what I think I'm going to do. I know something else that I do like about this machine. The fact that, yes, while it is a DX4 100, they've not tried overstepping themselves by putting Windows 95 on it. Like on my DX4 75 MHz powered Toshiba. I mean, yeah, sure, that can run Windows 95, but at the end of the day, you know, these are better for Windows for work groups. Anyway, <clears throat> this has been a wee look at um, the Innova Book 200 LS from Canon. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Um, I'm going to have a fantastic afternoon now, restoring this computer back tonight. And I hope that uh, you will subscribe. Please do so. Instructions on how to do so will follow. And please stay tuned for my next videos. Thank you for watching.